So my name is Aaron Stockwell. I am the Order of the Arrow Trail Crew Coordinator for 2010. Uh, and I'm here to go over the packing list uh, that we send out to all of our participants to kind of give you a visual aid of what we're really looking for when you come out to the Philmont Scout Ranch. So first of all, you'll need to bring a backpack. This is my personal backpack. It's a REI Flash, uh, but really any internal or external frame pack that you're familiar and comfortable with will work. Uh, participants can also rent packs here, but it's better if you are familiar with your own pack. Then next, the pack cover. Uh, really important because every day out here, uh, it seems to rain at some point. So you want something that will cover your pack. Uh, you can use trash bags, but this is probably the most durable and most sustainable option. Then, uh, plastic bags of assorted sizes. This is used to keep your gear clean. Uh, personally, I prefer dry bags like this. Uh, just again, it's more sustainable. I can get a couple of seasons out of this. Next, uh, we'll move on to the sleeping gear. First of all, uh, sleeping bags, you know, that's kind of a key thing. Uh, down to about 25 degrees is what we recommend. Uh, mine's a mummy bag uh, with a fairly waterproof uh, bag to store it in. Uh, another nice thing with stuff sacks is you can fill them with extra clothes and you got a pillow. Uh, sleep clothing. Sleep clothing is really important out here. Uh, we follow bear procedures very religiously. Um, so when you go to sleep, you want to change your clothes. So I just have a pair of gym shorts and a t-shirt, and that's what I wear when I go to sleep. Uh, then we have a foam pad. Um, whether yours is inflatable or uh, egg crate like this, or even like this, whatever you're really comfortable with. And then a stocking cap. Uh, sometimes, especially if you come out here early in the season, it can get very cold at night. So you'll want to have a nice stocking cap to keep your head warm in the sleeping bag. So now I'd like to spend a moment on footwear. Um, you always want to have a good pair of hiking boots. Um, that are well broken in. If they're not broken in, you're going to get blisters. It's going to be painful. Uh, you're probably going to cry a little bit. And we want good, sturdy hiking boots, not just for hiking, but for the work week as well. One nice thing that I always like doing is I like, after all the work is done during the day, I like to change into some camp shoes. Uh, my personal choice are these sandals right here, uh, but really anything that's light and you can compact down that isn't your normal shoes is going to be comfortable. Uh, also, if your boots happen to blow out at any point and get completely ruined, you might want those camp shoes to be something that you feel comfortable hiking in. Then, some nice wool socks. Uh, this is what I prefer, kind of a smart wool sort of uh, material, but just a really good heavy-duty wool sock. Uh, we like about two to three pairs of socks. Uh, that way you can have one on your feet, you can have one stored, and then one that's drying as well, because we often do cross streams, and your boots and your uh, socks will get wet. Then we have liner socks, again, two to three pairs of these. Uh, this can be up to your personal preference. Some people hike without them. Some people will not hike unless they have these on. Uh, it's really whatever you're comfortable with. I preferred these for quite a while. Next, we'll move on to clothing. Uh, what do we have here? Underwear, one to two pairs of that. Um, I prefer something that's going to wick away moisture from my body, but whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, then we have a couple of options with the next two items. Uh, you either want, uh, you want a pair of shorts and you want a pair of long pants, 
a really easy way to solve that problem is just get some convertible pants. That way you've got two items of clothing in one. Uh, that's what I usually do. Or you can also get a pair of shorts as well. Um, during the work week, there's a couple of extra things that we prefer participants bring along. Um, and the nice thing is you can leave these at the work site and we'll take them back down to base camp for you. So if you do want to bring some nice heavy duty pants, um, you can do that. These are the ones that most of the foremen wear, the uh, Arbor wear with the nice little Philmont brand right there. Um, that's because you're going to be lifting a lot of rocks, you're going to be building trail, things are going to get dirty, um, and you want something that's going to hold up. Uh, short sleeve shirts. Chances are you're not going to have a staff shirt, but something uh, that these are made of, I believe, polyester. Um, it's just something that keeps the moisture away from your body, makes you cool really quickly. Long sleeve shirts uh, are a key. It does get cold during the evenings. And also, if you're going to be sledging rock up at the work site, which is a very common thing, uh, you want to wear something that's going to protect your arms from shards of flying rock. Then a nice sweater is always good. Because uh, again, even though right now it's probably about 70 degrees, it can get to 40 degrees at night, and you always want something that's going to be nice and warm to wear. And then, of course, a rain jacket. Um, something we don't recommend ponchos uh, because it, they can get really torn up, especially if they're the kind that you buy at a gas station. But those are better than anything. Uh, but a nice sturdy rain jacket will really help you have a good Philmont experience because it does rain so often here. And a, a hat or a cap is always important to kind of shade your eyes um, and it prevents headaches and sunburn as well. So now we'll move on to eating implements. Um, a deep bowl or plate. This is what I use. Uh, it also serves as a cup. Um, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, whether it's a squishy plate or an origami sort of plate or, you know, really whatever you can use. Um, one thing that we've been telling people now is we eat bulk food up at the work site, so real food, it's not trail food. Um, so sometimes we'll have steak or pork chops. And it's kind of hard to eat a steak or a pork chop in this. So if you have a nice deep plate, that can work out for you. Um, a spoon. You really only need a spoon. Uh, you'll also have your pocket knife on you. So something like this or a spork, that usually serves the purpose quite well. As for water bottles, it gets very hot and very dry out here. Uh, so you want to have enough water. Um, we recommend three quarts minimum. Four, excuse me, four quarts is what we prefer. Uh, these sort of style of water bottles work well. Um, hydration packs work well also. Now we're moving on to the miscellaneous and personal items. So a small pocket knife. Mine has a little locking blade. Um, you, you might need pliers and stuff like that, but chances are someone in your crew is going to have a multi-tool as well. Uh, so a pocket knife will do just fine. Flashlight. Um, headlamps are what we've been using lately, but anything that is going to uh, put out light, that's always good. The maps. Uh, here at Philmont, we have three sectional maps, the North Country, South Country, and the Valvadal Valle map. Um, these, you really want a full set of these. Uh, your trek might not cover all of these, but if your crew has at least two sets of the maps, uh, that's enough for what you'll need. 
Uh, you can also buy an overall map, but those really aren't for navigation purposes, but they do make a great souvenir for afterwards. Uh, compass. Really only one or two of these compasses are needed per crew. Uh, this is the kind that I use. Uh, whatever you're really comfortable with works as well. Uh, this is nice because you can then put it down on the map and shoot bearings and stuff like that. Uh, a bandana. I have two of these. Uh, that's what I use. Uh, as many as you really want. Uh, if you are using these and they do get smelly, uh, you do have to put these up in your bear bags, which your foreman will talk about uh, once you get out here. But these are key. You can you know, wipe, wipe sweat away, um, use to strain out stuff when you're getting water from streams, things like that. Uh, a whistle. Lately, there have been whistles included on the sternum strap of backpacks. Um, so that's handy, kind of a two-in-one sort of deal. Uh, that's what I would use for that. The packing list says money, but money really, you don't need a whole lot of money out in the backcountry, maybe $5 uh, if you need to buy some postcards or stuff like that. Then we have lip balm. Um, your foreman will tell you when uh, you should stop putting it on. Usually that's around 4 o'clock. Uh, that's just because lip balm smells quite a bit. And bears like sweet things, and lip balm is usually pretty sweet tasting. Um, so you want to avoid it. Also, make sure it's not stuck in your you know, pockets before you go to sleep. Toothbrush and toothpaste. This is really all you need for when you're going to go out for two weeks. Um, otherwise, you're just carrying around a lot of extra toothpaste, toothbrush. Um, or you can get a big thing of this and share it with the entire crew. Moleskin right here. Uh, some people have other methods of treating blisters. This is the one that most people use. Um, good for blisters and hot spots on your feet because chances are uh, if you're not a very experienced hiker, you might get a blister or two, and you want to treat that. Uh, sunscreen is also important. Um, the worksite that we're in right now, and really any other worksite we're going to be in for the next couple of years, is going to have a lot of sun, um, and you don't want to get you know, sunburns that have blisters because that's just bad. It's not enjoyable for you. Sunglasses. These are my sunglasses uh, because I have prescription lenses. I also have prescription sunglasses. Um, it does get very bright out here. Small notepad and pen. Uh, we will provide notepads, but you might want your own personal journal or diary or something to write your little notes in. And that is about it. A couple of additional items that uh, we're recommending participants bring. A day pack is important. When you're at the work site, the, uh, the campsite is pretty far away from where we're working right now. So if you have uh, a day pack or the lid to your backpack that can carry things like a rain jacket, food, water up to the work site, uh, it's going to be a much more enjoyable time. Plus, you can leave this at the work site, and we will bring it down after your work week. Um, you can bring your own gloves. Uh, we do provide work gloves, much like this. Sometimes people like actual warm gloves, because depending on when in the season you go, it can be kind of cold. Um, and also, a lot of people ask about tents. Uh, Philmont provides what we call fill tents. They're blue. They're a little heavy, uh, but they do the job. If you have any tent that holds uh, two people and you can uh, set it up 
you know, fairly easily. Uh, the other trick is you have to have the floor attached to the rest of the tent. Uh, that's part of our bear procedures, so you want to follow those. Um, if you want a tent that you're questioning, uh, bring it anyways. Uh, we can store gear that you're not bringing out on the trail.